Well, what's the criteria for West Indies team selection? That's the question from ex Windies captain Dwayne Bravo, who is puzzled yet unsurprised at the non-selection of his younger brother, Darren Bravo, for the upcoming One Day International Series against England starting December 3 in Antigua and the Barbuda. Sir Champion took to social media shortly after the squad was made public on Monday to express his displeasure with his brother's omission and cricket West Indies on a whole. In a press conference on Monday, lead selector Desmond Haynes spoke on Darren Bravo's omission. Yeah, I think that it was a very uh, tough decision for us to make as a panel. Um, Darren has proven uh, not only this year, but last year as well uh, in the Super 50 tournament uh, to be somebody who, you know, uh, performed well at this level. Uh, but we have invested in the, um, in players like, um, you know, Alex Antonis and, and, and Casey Carty. And we just figure that, you know, selecting this team, we also had to take into consideration that the World Cup 2027 is something that we've got in mind. And we believe that we, we have um, invested in these players and we believe that we should give them the opportunity playing against a very strong England side. And, and that's the reason why uh, Darren has been in Omini. All right, let's take a quick look at the squad that has been named to face England. Shea Hope as the captain, Alzari Joseph as the vice captain, Alec Atanas, Yannick Carrier, Casey Carty, Roston Chase, Shane Dalrich, Matthew Ford, Shimron Hetmeyer, Brandon King, Budakesh Moti, Keon Otley, Shafin Rutherford, Romario Shepard, and O'Shane Thomas. Well, Joining us on the Sportsmax Zone once again is Dwayne Bravo. Good afternoon, Bravo. Yeah, good afternoon. All right, a pleasure to have you on the Sportsmax Zone. I know this time you join us um, on Zoom, but nevertheless, it's always a pleasure to be chatting with you. Let's start. Let's get to the meat of the matter. Your brother, Darren. <laughs> Darren Bravo, not being selected for the Windy Squad despite topping the runs in the just concluded Super 50. Well, yeah, um, obviously I just listened to the interview the chairman just read out there. And, um, you know, this is a, I would say, this is a song I hear before, you know. Um, whenever a, a, a selector fully well know that what the decision that they make by leaving out a, a player, um, not based on performance or on, on something else that they can't really say to the public, I don't know what it is, they sing that song. You know, we're looking to build for the next World Cup. We're looking to move on and invest in young play, younger players. Um, uh, you know, I think it's time people come clean. Uh, I mean, the chairman is a highly respected person in, in, in West Indies cricket. And I, I just that just think that is not good enough, you know. Um, it's sad that it happened to my brother. Um, I could speak on personal experience as well. It happened to me uh, where well, Mr. Lloyd did the same thing. Um, you know, I was dropped at 31, age 31, off of the one-day team, and then they picked someone who was older than me. So I think these messages, these wrong messages they keep sending to the public is just need to stop so that is just my take on it it's unfortunate and like i said i don't agree with it but it is what it is yeah and they speak about making way for younger players and then i instantly and not to dismiss or disregard Keon Otley's performance at all because of course he was great in the super 50 we have to admit that but I think mm -hmm. about, of course, I started Googling the ages of all the players and he's 33. So I can't understand the difference. And maybe you can help me because you've captained West Indies for some time. Uh, Dwayne, you've been around the setup. And a lot of the players speak about you as a motivational person now. So Kia Natalie gets the call up. He's 33 years of age. So what's that about as i said they they, they, they they keep giving this information to the public and using this age factor as the reason of why we head into the next direction maybe for sympathy mm -hmm. but it just doesn't add up it doesn't make sense because like i said what is the difference between a player who is 32 33 and 34 
there's not much of a difference. And we've been through this same scenario in previous years before. Again, I highlight this scenario with myself and Pollard uh, in the, for the 2015 World Cup. You know, 2014, I was the captain of the team. Pollard was the vice captain. And a few months before the World Cup, both of us were dropped. And Mr. Lloyd gave us the same explanation. We're looking to build for the next World Cup, which was 2019. We're looking to move in that next direction. And then you pick players who are older than us and then the oh, same age with us. So um, I just think the, the, the pettiness and the lies need to stop. And people just need to be mature enough to give the right explanation of what, what is the real reason players don't get selected. It cannot do based on performance because you can see my brother, not only the last two years, the last four years, if you go back and check his, his performance in the last four years in Super 50, um, he has been one of the leading players. Uh, so, you know, again, Mr. Haynes needs to come better than that and the people deserve better than that. All right. Do we have a couple of questions? Let, let's dig down a little bit deeper on that because something that Desmond Haynes said about at the regional level, Darren has done really well and no one can question that. Anybody who mm -hmm. questions that is delusional or absolutely insane. But let's dig a yeah. little bit deeper because in his last 13 one-day internationals, this is at the higher level now, uh, yeah. against teams like Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, Zimbabwe, India and Australia. He has three centuries, well, not in the last 30 matches. In the last 30 matches, he's had one century against Sri Lanka and, of course, a 39 and a 37 not out. But against India and Australia, his scores read 16-8, 10-2, 0-18, 18-1, and 19. Could it be that the selectors are looking at that inconsistency at the higher level why they didn't consider him for selection this time around? Well, I'm sure he's not the only player who have an inconsistent performance at the higher level when they bridge the gap from local to international. I can guarantee that without even looking at the stats. Um, but when you look at um, players in the, in, in the Caribbean, not only Darren, um, a lot of players struggle at international level because they are, they are not given the, the time and the amount of game time to really catch them feet and catch themselves. You have to understand a lot of us um, started playing early. You know, 20, 21, I said, okay, they are ready for international cricket. When, when, it, when, when really and truly, as, as players, as batsmen, you, you, you really start to mature at, at, at 28, 30. And in West Indies cricket, those are the age where people start to say, okay, it's time to move on from this player. Um, Darren had a very good start to his international career, and I'm sure you can agree with that. Mm -hmm. uh, but he was back into Brian had, Lara. <laughs> exactly. He had a very good start, when, and that's from all formats, Test Cricket, uh, One Day International. And I think the, the incident that happened with the former president a few years ago obviously led to Darren being banned for, for, for two years from international cricket. So on his return, it was a bit... It, it, it wasn't his best, but I think this is where man management comes in. If Darren was surrounded by a system or by players or by coaches that can actually help him get back to that level that we once saw him before, I think he will definitely be, be producing what his true potential shows. And it, it don't, again, it's not only about Darren. So many players get bad treatment in, in, in West Indies. And, um, you know, a lot of people just look at the end result. Oh, he's not performing. Do we ask why they are, why they are not performing? Are we, are we providing these players with the tools to perform to, 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 to the best of their ability? I don't think so. A lot of we we, we, are, we grew up in average facilities. We, we practice in average facilities, play in average grounds. And you want know, players to produce high class performances. Mm -hmm. Let me ask so you it has to it has to add up. Let me ask you this. I mean you are you're from a country that has produced 
a raft of quality players for the West Indies in the last couple of couple of decades. Yourself, Kiran Pollard, you know, the, the Ramdin, Ram Narayan, you know, the name, the name, the list is as long as my arm. What is it yeah. that Trinidad does differently from the rest of the Caribbean? Why is it that they are able to produce more consistently than other countries? With perhaps Barbados being the only exception, but rather better than other territories. And could that? Could that formula be then transferred to the other territories to bring about that kind of consistency from the other territories as well? Well, that's a good question. Trinidad and Tobago cricket is strong because of a couple of reasons, right? A lot of people think we have a very good infrastructure, we have good facilities. It's better than some of the other Caribbean islands, yes, but not to take much credit, but I think the fact that Myself, Pollard, and Sunil Narayan, to a lesser extent, we were exposed to play cricket outside. So we play Big Bash, we play in England, uh, we get the, we obviously IPL and stuff. We get the opportunities to see what it's like to have a, a strong system and good facilities. So when we come back and play for Trinidad, we try to implement it into our system and in our culture. So we challenge, whether it's from a board level, um, you know, from whether it's from captaincy level, we lead from the front. We try to implement these things that we see outside and bring it into our cricket. A simple thing as, you know, having a, a full-time physio, having a full-time strength and condition trainer, massage therapist. These are things we was never accustomed to even when we start playing. A lot of times, myself and Paula dip in our own pocket. To, 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 to have a, a, a massage therapist or a physio avail, uh, available for us. Facilities is very important. We gain most of our experience playing outside. All we wanted to do is to come back home and pass on those experience that we gain from outside. So uh, example, the likes of Glenn Maxwell, Aaron Finch, Steve Smith, all these players, I was telling to my manager a few days ago that when I when we played Big Bash, back then, these guys were Finch players. They were on the bench. like, And now you see where they are today in their cricket. Look at the difference when you see the likes of Kane Williamson, Trent Bolt, and all these guys who play on the 19 World Cup along with other players. And you see how fast their cricket excel. And our own players don't reach that 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 far. Yeah. It have to do with structure, facilities, right? Things in place. We don't have that. Trinidad and Tobago is the best in the Caribbean. And then we have players who play outside. So when we come back home, we implement those same infrastructure and those same discipline and work ethic into our programs. Dwayne, and you and know... And the players follow yeah, and you say that, right? You're talking about plying your trade elsewhere and, of course, bringing what you learn back into the West Indies setup, let's say, or for your country. You know, and this is no secret, many selectors and many fans and, you know, those governing cricket always has pushed the narrative that a lot of the players would rather go after the money because you spoke about learning benefiting from mm -hmm. the training from all these T20 mm -hmm. and T10 and bringing it back. But there is mm -hmm. the narrative, and you have to agree, that the players yeah. choose these big leagues and abandon West Indies cricket. Talk yeah. to me about that. <laughs> well, we hear it all the time. And obviously, it, it's sad um, that, you know, that's how people think. Uh, when I speak, I can clearly speak for myself. Yes. Um, that's never the case with me. Because um, I remember early on in my career, again, go back to Big Bash. Those days, there was no CPL. There were a Caribbean, um, Caribbean T20, our local one. And um, I used to leave Big Bash just to come back home and play for Trinidad and Tobago in our domestic tournament and leave thousands of dollars on the, on, in, 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 in Big Bash in Australia to come back and represent Trinidad and Tobago. So the money thing is like, so when I see it, I just smile. Yeah. Um, a lot of the times when, I, when you see me do play in those leagues is because I was not selected, right? So therefore, 
if I'm not selected for international cricket, I will get offers to play anywhere in the world. So, and that's the God of the shoot. Like the last time I played test cricket was, I was 26 years old. Well, you think that was my decision to stop playing test cricket at 26? No. I was dropped. I was, and I will challenge anybody in the system former captain, coaches, whoever was involved at that time to say something else. At 31, I was dropped off for the one-day team. So what, what, what should I do when I'm dropped from the West Indies team? Come back home and play uh, regional cricket? No. I go and um, I am a cricketer. I'm a professional cricketer. And if I'm in high demands outside, I will go and make my living and earn my money because that's what a, a, a cricketer should do. And not only a cricketer, any athlete, any person should make sure that they secure themselves financially. That's very important because there's life after cricket. So, um, But I never, ever once say no to West Indies cricket and go and play a, a tournament. Never, ever. And point taken, but that, that's, that's your specific situation. But can you say the same for others? Because... We've seen I can say the same. I can say the same for others because, the, okay, let's... Well, let me finish the question that. because there have been yeah. instances, doing where yeah. players have been selected and made themselves unavailable for mm -hmm. West Indies cricket, but then they're playing in the leagues. And look, I understand the dynamics of it because sport careers are short and you have to make as much well, money as you can because you don't know what's around the corner in terms of financial security. The reality is... You know, so you're going to have to play, you're going to play those leagues and you're going to make that money. And I don't think anybody has a quarrel with that because, as I said before, sports careers are short. You probably have 10, 15 years of your lucky, and then you have the rest of your life to live after that. And I'm sure Cricket West Indies doesn't have money to pay people who are retired from international cricket. But you, you have to agree that there are, some, there are times when the perception is, is the reality where... There are players who have been invited to, to represent the West Indies, and for one reason or the other, they're not available. And one of the reasons why I bring this up is not to disparage those players who take those contracts. Is that I'm old enough to remember a time when the Michael Holdings and the Viv Richards, who played in England, used to come back and play regional cricket, and it brought the crowds out and brought an energy to West Indies cricket that has not been the case for the last 20 years, 30 years almost. So there is that balance to strike, you believe, of when to represent the West Indies and when to go and seek the money. So, you know, how do you, how do you strike that balance? I think, um, obviously, when you look at the handling and the runnings of West Indies cricket over the years, players, this is, if it's one thing, players lose trust. Players lose trust in the system. So a player, today, to, today he's selected and tomorrow he's dropped. And then when he's dropped, there is no proper explanation. You uh, he, he don't know when next he's going to be selected. They, they, most times when players get dropped, there is no kind of, there is not even a communication to say, well, we drop you because we think X, Y, and Z, we needed to go back and work on this. So I think all players making personal decisions, they weigh up the options, uh, they see how players been treated before, Maybe they try to prevent being treated that way, or themselves also maybe were treated like that at some point in time. So I guess it boils down to a player um, choice, uh, but I don't believe, especially with the players, my peers, um, you know, that look like Pollard, Gail, um, you know, Sunil Narang. I I can't experience where these guys say no to West Indies and go and play in the leagues. These things happen once they are not selected, then therefore they go and play. Let me sh let's shift away from that for a little bit. At the yeah. grassroots level, Dwayne, I mean, as I said, you played the cricket through the levels coming through to Western East cricket, senior Western East cricket. What needs to change? In my mind, I think th there is a model in India where we have kids playing cricket from their, before they're 10 years old, mastering the basics, mastering the mechanics of the sport, learning the tactics of the sport by the time they're 15, 16. That clearly is missing from the West Indies. When you look at the under-15 levels now, right across the region, the cricket is frighteningly poor. Um, how can cricket West Indies, what do they have to do 
to be able to transform the grassroots cricket, to be able to then produce more players like yourself who have this all-round ability to be excellent at the 2020 leagues, at the T20 leagues, sorry, at the ODI level, at the test level. What needs to change and, and how does that change come about? I don't have the, I don't have the direct answers for it. Uh, what I can say is that, um, again, I keep harping on facilities um, that play a big part. You know, when you when you are you, when you are a kid growing up, for example, when I was growing up, um, I had access to Queens Park Cricket Club at the age of eight, and we all know Queens Park. Uh, Queens Park is one of the best uh, cricket grounds in the entire Caribbean. So, imagine an eight-year-old have access to a facility like that. What it did for me, um, and the likes of my brother Pollard, Narang, all of us been t through that system at a very early age. So we learn the fundamentals of the game and the basics of the game. So facilities is very important. And I think, I don't think people take it seriously and understand the importance of it. Uh, and believe that we can just keep relying on natural talent, natural ability. We need to enhance our natural talent that we have in the Caribbean with infrastructure, with science, with everything else that will help their natural ability. The rest of the world is doing it. You look at the rest of the world, why they are so successful. You, look at you might take out a few things and say, okay, this is why they're successful and let's try to do it like that. But there's a lot more, there's a bigger scale they need to do. So um, uh, from a first class point of view, what I will suggest and recommend also, like those grounds that we play our regional games at, Remember back in the days, they used to play when, when I come to Jamaica, I might play in Alpart, they might play in Chilani, in, in Trinidad, they were playing in Gaokara Park. Um, you know, Go Guy and I might play in Burby, so one of those places. I know Weeper have a rule that all first class games need to play on first class grounds, international grounds. But you need to bring back the community into, the, into, into cricket again, you need to get them back involved in the sport again. When you go and play in a recreation ground, whether it's in Alpha to Gakara Park, you guarantee to, to get a full house or even half. But when you put these full size games in national stadium that normally hold 10 and 12,000 people and you can barely get 200 people, that, it just, is that not good for a player? Is that not good? Like, you want players to feel the crowd, feel that energy, and want to play first class cricket, want to play regional cricket. Yeah. So you speak about, of course, improving the cricket, starting from grassroots levels and, you know, ensuring that people come out to support. One of the other things that you spoke about, and I'm quoting you from the post that you made, and I was really surprised, I have to say, Dwayne, when I saw that post coming from you, because most times when you post, it's about your music, it's about your mm -hmm. the artist that you're, you know, pushing these different things. So yeah. I have to say, when I saw that post a few minutes after uh, the team was named, I was shocked. And then, of course, I've never really seen you on any channel coming on to talk about things like this. One of First the time. <laughs> right. So, so I have to ask you, why now? Why speak out? And one of the things you said is. The system has failed again, right? Mm -hmm. So clearly something is up, you are frustrated, and you've decided that the time is right now to let the public know what I feel, what I have been through. So talk mm -hmm. to me, why now? Yeah, it's a bittersweet feeling because it's it's something that, I mean, West Indies cricket is very close to my heart. And, and over the years that I played the game, I played the game with a with a spirit that bring life to the to the to the team. Um, I live my life like that, and I I try to stay away from controversy. I try to stay away from negativities, things that really I don't have control over. I try to stay away from it. You know, um, as you can say, this is the first time I really open up and speak in in a forum like this. Um, despite what have happened to me personally in my own career, but I felt I feel sad for my brother because. I know how much it means to him to represent West Indies. I know he still want to play for West Indies and, and, and the, the work he's been putting in. Um, you know, again, he's someone that, um, you know, very committed to the, to the sport. And when somebody dedicate their life to a sport, 
and they do everything that is asked of them to be selected. And the sad thing about it is I can guarantee you, up until now, he is yet to get a phone call, a text message, or any sort of communication from the coach or from the chairman as selectors. And for me, that is the disappointing part because I've been there from since 2004. I see the, the, the bad treatment uh, to players, um, you know, and I always said to myself, if ever I get in a position, whether it's from a captain point of view or administration point of view, a simple communication is the most important thing. Make a difference. And is that sad that I expected better from this, from this new, new regime? And as I said in my post, but it's like nothing changes. You know, you don't communicate with players, lack of respect. Um, so you ask yourself, okay, when would it stop? You know, and then you will hear these silly statements like what the chairman come out and say, you know, um, you, we hear this already. The fans hear this already. When, 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 when can we hear something else? When can we say, okay, we're moving in this next direction? You're talking about 2027. The team have to... The team is not even qualified to play the World Cup. So maybe the best approach is, let's pick our best players. Let's play, pick our players who are in form. Let's win some series. Let's try to move up our rankings. So maybe time 2027, we don't have to go through another qualification or another qualifiers again. That should be the approach. Not build for 2027. In 2015, he said they built for 2019. That was a failed process. Now, we, we missed 2023, another failed process. And now we're looking to 2027. So again, you keep building, building, building. When will the building actually stop? One if person. you go back in the last decade and think that from a white ball point of view, right? At one point in time, we, we, were, we wasn't like great to like how we was before. But we was going, we was going up. At some point in time, we were, our one-day cricket, especially our white ball cricket, was showing some sign of process, some progress. Then the politics come in, and then they have the interference, the outside interference, and these are the downfall in West Indies cricket. Too much outside interference, too much victimization, and, and I, don't, I don't think we as a society, as a people, can accept strong leaders or people with strong personalities. The moment you object to something, they consider you a rebel or, okay, put an X by his name. He's okay. never to play again. He should never do this again. It, it shouldn't be like that. Do you have 30 seconds? Um, I want to ask you, you, you in, in your post as well, you, you, you encourage your brother to keep his chin up. Can you speak any at all to his state of mind right now? And how, does, how, do, how do you help him to to navigate this difficult period? Yeah, it's difficult. I mean, the words could only say so much. Uh, let's tell him, keep his chin up. Um, you know, to, I mean, he wake up today and he start off his day. Um, he He's someone who, um, the good thing about him, he's good. He's, he's good. He's um, in a good space. Um, he's Obviously, he's sad, but it's just for him to continue. You know, he don't have control over certain things. It's not to, 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 to try to pick a fight with anybody, but his stats speak for itself. That's the most important thing. Just to, whenever you get a chance to bat, make runs. Let your bat talk for you. All right, Dwayne. Well, you know, we want to thank you so much for stopping by on the Sports Mac Zone. Of course, we continue to wish you all the best, and we'll talk again very soon. Thank you very much. You're so no problem. Former Windies captain there. Dwayne Bravo. Let's take a break.